This is the iPhone 13 mini. And I had two worries about this phone. One was the battery life and two was the screen size. So let's see how I got on during my first two weeks with this phone. Hello, welcome back to Marcos Reviews, not sponsored by Superdry. Thank you for subscribing if you have, and if you haven't subscribed, the button's just down there. So I was in a real dilemma when it came to the iPhone this year. I had no idea whether to just stick with my iPhone 12 Pro or upgrade to the 13. It didn't take me long to realize that I couldn't be bothered to upgrade to the 13 Pro or the 13 Pro Max. There's just nothing about those phones that excites me enough. So I had a cunning plan, which was to kind of invent my own interesting upgrade to the iPhone 13. And to do that, I'd change the size of the device completely and go from my trusty iPhone 12 Pro to the iPhone 13 mini. To me, that made the whole thing a far more interesting upgrade. Now this won't be your kind of atypical iPhone review simply because you've probably heard all the specs already. I'm not gonna regurgitate the specs. I'm gonna talk about what it's like to live with the smallest iPhone money can buy. What's the battery like? What's the form factor like? Is the camera as good as they say it is? Let's get straight into it. Let's very quickly tick off the boring bits. Firstly, A15 processor, super fast. iOS 15 on this phone, stable, brilliant, no problem at all. Build quality, top notch. The screen is iPhone great. The notch is a little bit smaller. There's still no USB-C. The starlight color is a combination of white and silver. It's very nice. There's no charging brick in the box. You still get some Apple stickers. That's it, that's the boring stuff out of the way. Let's get into the meat of what matters about this phone. So, battery life. This is the biggest concern that I had about the iPhone 13 mini, purely because I know, even though I didn't own one, I know how poor it was on the iPhone 12 mini. Now, iOS is quite helpful. It does give you a battery performance graph thing that you can look at. I never look at it because, as you know, I don't really care about benchmarks and things. But for this review, I thought I'd have a quick look at what my battery performance looks like. So, as you can see, in the last 10 days, I've apparently achieved three hours, 17 minutes of average screen on time and four hours, 12 minutes of average screen off time. That sounds pretty terrible. And I don't really know what those numbers mean. I know it breaks it down below and gives you all the apps that are using the battery and all that sort of stuff and it breaks it up by day and ugh, boring. In terms of the way this battery performs day to day, it's absolutely fine. Now I'm a relatively, heavy is the wrong word, but I'm a very consistent iPhone user. I use it throughout the day. I'm always picking it up. I'm checking stats on YouTube. I'm perhaps replying to emails, using WhatsApp, checking social feeds, taking photos, transferring files via AirDrop between this and my Macs. Now what's happening at the moment is that I'm getting to about midday and it's still got 70% of battery left. To me, that's great. When I get to about nine o'clock, half nine at night, it's still got normally anywhere between 20 to 25 occasionally 30% battery left. That ain't too shabby. That's that's really, really good battery life. Now it's not a par apparently on the 13 Pro or, or certainly the 13 Pro Max. I don't have either of those phones, but I have watched the reviews and the Pro Max in particular seems to last for, for months. Not that long, but you get the point. It's a very, very long lasting battery. So you're not gonna get that kind of battery out of the iPhone 13 mini. Obviously, it's a much smaller device. But day to day, it hasn't been a problem at all. So if you're worried about the battery life with the iPhone 13 mini, don't be. I can set your nerves. It is clearly a lot better than the iPhone 12 mini. Apart from the battery life, the other thing I was concerned about was the size of the screen on this phone. And when you compare it against the iPhone 12 Pro, this feels like a huge phone now, now I'm picking it up, whereas this is tiny. And I was worried that it was gonna to be too small to do anything productive on it, really. As it turns out, that's not the case. And when I did my unboxing of the iPhone 13 mini, I, you could probably, if you watched that, you'll have seen that I was actually pleasantly surprised by not only the size of the device, but the size of the screen. I think what I was thinking, I was expecting it to, to feel as small as the iPhone 5, for example. It doesn't, although it's not far off the same size dimensionally. The screen, because it's got such small bezels and it's, you know, the notch is 20% smaller, it just feels perfectly workable. But the best thing about the iPhone 13 mini, the thing that really struck me when I first went out for a dog walk with this was just how satisfying it is to walk along dog lead in one hand, phone in the other, and not have to do any kind of finger gymnastics to do what you wanna do. One-handed use is where this phone absolutely sings. It's just, it's, it's brilliant, honestly. If you haven't had one of these in your hands yet, 
Go to your nearest Apple store, try, try out your mates. Oh, it's just lovely. Everything about it is great. Excuse the helicopter. Now, as you may know, I had a grand plan to basically use the iPhone 13 mini as my phone and not do a huge amount of content consumption and stuff on it and add to the mix the iPad mini, which was gonna be my main sort of consumption device and the thing that I do stuff productively on while sat on the sofa. By the way, my full review of this is coming next week, so make sure you subscribe, hit the bell and all that sort of stuff so you don't miss that. But what's happened actually, as much as I am using this and love it, I'm finding that this actually is fine. As I mentioned earlier, doing emails, watching YouTube videos, sifting through web content, even using some of the web apps I use, like Notion for example, it's absolutely fine. I'm, I could just get away with this iPhone mini. The size of it doesn't feel like a debilitating factor at all. This might be my favorite sized iPhone so far. Now, one of the biggest changes with the iPhone 13, as is always the case with Apple, was the camera. And we now have this absolutely huge camera bump here on the rear of the phone, which we've always had a camera bump there. We've had one for a long, long time. But trust me, until you see it in person, you don't quite appreciate how big it is. We are then led to believe by Apple that the stuff that's going on inside here is even better and it is incredibly impressive. I mentioned in a previous video that I don't take a huge number of what I'd call professional photos with my phone. I have a DSLR for that, which sits over there. I tend to use the iPhone mainly for snapping away at life and just, you know, capturing moments, all that sort of stuff, which I think is the, what the majority of people do. I know some people go further and use it as their main camera, which is amazing. But for me, it's just a, I just take photos of things here and there. And as long as it takes a decent photo, and it's well lit, it's well exposed, and it's sharp enough and it's in focus, I'm happy. So you get that, all of that stuff with the iPhone 13 mini. The difference comes in the fact that we now have a lot of the camera tech that was in the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So sensor shift is a good example of that, which is a form of stabilization, a really smart form of, of stabilization actually. There's a new ultra wide lens in there as well, which is just fantastic. I always found the ultra wide lens far more useful than the, the 2X lens. And what's nice this year is that we can choose from four preset photo modes. And I'll show you what they look like now. So we have standard, rich contrast, vibrant, warm, and cool. There's subtle differences between all four of those. You'll find one that you like. You may just leave it as standard as most people probably will, to be honest. But if you are the sort of person who wants a bit more of a, a Samsung look to your phone, you, know, you may want to go with a rich contrast photo. Or if you just like your photos to be a little bit warmer, the warm setting, that's the one that I've stuck with for mine. I tend to like that warmer feel to photos. It's just nice to have these photo modes on the camera now. But the really big changes come with the video capabilities of this phone. So Apple have been quite generous. One of the biggest announcements as far as they were concerned for the new camera system was a thing called cinematic mode. And the reason they've been fairly generous, unlike Apple normally, is that they've put this in all of the iPhone 13s. So the iPhone 13 mini can do cinematic mode. And cinematic mode is what is basically known as rack focusing. Now I can demonstrate rack focusing with this expensive camera that you're watching me through. If I put my mug in front of my face, the camera automatically focuses on the mug. And if I remove the mug, it will automatically focus back on my eyes, like so. It's very clever. And rack focusing is something which is a cinematic technique, hence the, the name that Apple have given it. But you'll see it on TV programs. It's used all the time. And it's used to tell stories, to set scenes, to give you some context in the image. And most commonly, it'll be when someone is in the foreground talking, they turn away, and the person in the background is suddenly the focus shifts to that person. But that is what the iPhone 13 mini can do. And it's really clever. So if, for example, I'm, to, I'm here, I have someone behind me, and this was an iPhone 13, if I turn my head away, it would know that I've turned my head away and automatically focus on the person behind. And also you can change how much blur there is. We call it bokeh, but you can change how much background blur there is. And there's also something called AF tracking lock, which is where you choose one subject in the frame and the iPhone will lock focus onto that subject, no matter how far you move backwards, forwards, around, it will just keep focus on that subject. Now what's super impressive about cinematic mode is that it does all of this computationally. It's not doing it, as far as I know anyway, it's not doing it with the lens or with the sensor. It's all in software. So the blur behind you is all software based. The way it switches between focuses is all software based as well. The fact that you, it recognizes when you turn your head around, that is all AI based, I guess. It's incredibly clever. However, there's a couple of caveats with this. One of them is that 
doesn't look quite right. You do need very good lighting to get the most out of cinematic mode, which is understandable. You need good lighting for all, for any kind of photography or video work. Secondly, it doesn't always quite get the background blur right. It reminds me a little bit of the early days of portrait mode with the camera, with the stills camera, where the background blur was looked good, but it wasn't always bang on. There were some issues with the, the kind of, you know, the line that it's drawing around the main subject. The other issue, and probably the bigger one for me being a video geek, is that it is limited to 1080p at 30 frames a second. But equally, I think it demonstrates how difficult this stuff is. Clearly, cinematic mode requires an awful lot of processing. It's obviously why they can only do it in 1080p at the moment, but it's just an indication of how difficult this stuff is. I have no doubt that it will get better. I think next year we'll see the next version of cinematic mode. It might be available in 4K. I think the background blur issues will be sorted out. I think people who mess around making movies at homes and stuff will have a lot of fun with this. I think film students will also get to play with rack focusing on their phone. All of that is fantastic, but I think as a professional tool, it's not quite there yet. The single most impressive thing about this phone has been how effortlessly it's slotted into my life and how easy it is to live with. And that's all down to its physical size. It's very small, but you still, as I mentioned earlier, get enough screen real estate to do meaningful work. That's a brilliant combination. It also works really well with MagSafe accessories. So for example, I love the way the MagSafe wallet sits on this phone. For example, if you put the same wallet on the back of the iPhone 12, there's a gap around here. I've always had problems with that because it kind of sits out of line. You don't get that with the iPhone 13 mini. It sits lovely and flush on there, so there's no accidentally misplacing it. It's just perfect. And the same goes for the MagSafe battery pack, which, is huge. But again, because it sits so flush on the device, there's no accidentally placing it incorrectly or it's just, I don't know, I just love the way these accessories work with this tiny phone. People comment quite a lot on this phone as well. A lot of people have said to me, wow, is that the new iPhone 13? Is it, is it the small one? And they seem to echo my thoughts when they have a go with it. They're like, well, it's not that small, is it? But I love the size of it. And going back to the camera, because the camera is so good and you get to play with things like cinematic mode, having this little absolute rocket ship in your pocket is a very satisfying thing indeed. And the big question is, do I miss the iPhone 12 Pro? No, I, not at all. I mean, I've not spoken this animatedly about an iPhone for two or three years. As great a phone as the iPhone 12 Pro is, it's really boring. The only thing I think I'm missing and which I'd like to try is the macro mode. So the macro mode, which is where you can get really close with the camera, doesn't work on the iPhone 13 mini. I think it's only available on the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. And there is Pro Motion to think about as well. So the iPhone 13 mini has the regular standard 60 hertz refresh rate screen, but that is the iPhone screen we've had for many, many years, so it doesn't feel any different. Now, I've not seen the ProMotion screen yet on the 13 Pro or Pro Max. I might change my mind if I see that. It's that age-old thing. What you don't know doesn't hurt you. Conclusion time. Do I recommend the iPhone 30? You know, yes, I do. I recommend it wholeheartedly. And most importantly, if you've been thinking about this phone, but you've been put off by either the size or the battery life, go and buy it now. Neither of those things matter. The battery is absolutely fine, and the size of it is its biggest strength. Equally, if, like me, you're thinking about switching from a bigger phone, like the iPhone 12 Pro, but you're a bit worried about doing so, do it. Trust me, it is a much more interesting upgrade, I think, than going just for the, the new version of the 12 Pro. The only reason I would tread carefully is if you are an absolute power user and you love getting through a day and a half with your iPhones. You're not gonna get that with the iPhone 13 mini. The battery in this is a day long, basically. That's what you get out of it. Unless you're willing to carry around battery packs, obviously, then it might not be quite right for you in that respect. And I genuinely hope this isn't the swan song for the iPhone mini. I'm hoping that the improvements Apple have made with the battery life on this phone and the great reception it's had so far, fingers crossed, means that we will keep seeing the mini version of the phone. Now, if you've still got some time, keep watching for a link to my unboxing and first reactions video of the iPad mini. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll catch you in the next video.